Hey y'all, so on Project Gus Gus I've been looking for a decent tire carrier and I just haven't found any that uh, catches my eye. I don't like the bumper mount tire carriers. I wanted something that's on the hatch, something different. I found a tire carrier from HK Off-Road called the Kratos Tire Carrier. And in this video I'll show you guys how I do it. It might not be step by step, but I'll include everything I do. And hopefully you guys can follow along. Uh, here we go. So here is the HK Tire Carrier. It's... Let's get some light on this. Sorry guys. My only time after is after work to get these things done. Half inch thick, four inch wide, two inch square tube, quarter wall, four on four and a half bolt pattern, four and four and a half, five on four and a half. Okay, so as I was telling you, here is the HK tire carrier. You guys can see this is the top section here. It's got four bolts welded to it. This is three sixteenths, half inch steel, four inch wide, two inch receiver. So here we have the bottom of the HK. Kratos tire here. This is 3 16 one inch wide, roughly an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Four inch wide, half inch steel, two inch square tube, quarter wall, spare tire mount with a four and a half by five bolt pattern. And then you guys got the top plate. It has four studs on it and then and here we have the bottom hardware and plates and on my workbench I've got the struts and the mounting points so you've got the updated struts that come in the kit as well uh, looks like a fairly straightforward install it's got a total of 12 holes you have to drill in your hatch. And once again, this will only work on a 97 to 01 Cherokee because they have the steel hatches. Now, Bash is awesome because he doesn't just make this a universal fit. He measures this to your specific back spacing of your wheel tire setup. Um, when you order your tire, he's going to ask you your measurements, the backspace measurements. And he doesn't mean the backspace of the rim. He wants the backspace from the outer side wall of your tire to the inner flange of your wheel so you know how far to set this apart. Now, that being said, we're going to get this situated and we're going to start working on mocking it up. I will not paint this until I have it mounted and situated to make sure it's all ready to go on the Jeep because I don't want it to paint it and then scratch it up. So we'll get to that point here in a minute. And I'm also going to change these out. I've got some splined uh, lug nuts that use a spe specific tool. And that's my chief inspector right there. Alright, so here is the first... Sorry for the background noise. I got a highway nearby, y'all. So, the XJ, according to Bash, the holes are slightly offset. So you want the offset portion towards the inner part of the hatch. Like so. You can see how this is greater towards the outside, less inside. Now, you want to make sure this is sitting up as tight as possible. And you want to take your measurements from here to here and here to here. You want to make sure it's centered before you even drill. Measure it as many times as you need to to be comfortable with this. I measured it about five times and it's dead on right now. So I'm going to center punch these holes here and here and then I'm going to pilot drill them. Once I get a pilot hole drilled then I'll step these up to a half inch hole. So let me get my center punch out, which is in my pocket, and I can't do while I'm holding this. So 
I've got a center punch. Right here. We're gonna mark the tap these holes and then we're gonna drill them. Y'all can see I have the pilot holes drilled. Now I'm gonna pull this plate back out and I'm going to use a half inch drill bit and take this out because uh, I cannot find my step bit so that'll be the next go so we'll go ahead and lower the hatch because with the hatch of it puts tension on these wires here so pull the hatch down slide this out and it'll expose our holes and then I'll take it out with a half inch bit alright so here we have the four half inch holes drilled I had to bring out the big gun. My drill, my cordless drill isn't strong enough, so I brought out my big Craftsman quarter drill. Now, I'm going to take the nuts off of here. We're going to close the hatch and hang it off that and see how it fits. Um, give me a second, y'all, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, you got it. So let's get some light on it. Holes are centered. I'm having issues. It's hitting the roof line up here. I'm gonna have to grind that down a little. And then I ran into a snag where even that sitting centered is off here. I mean, look at the third brake light. Everything's centered up. But I came down on my wiper arm or the wiper motor mount or electronic motor stud all right you guys so i got my initial holes drilled and the hatch doesn't want to open it's rubbing hitting the truck so i'm going to grind it a little bit it's not going to hurt it there's plenty of meat up there and then down here we're hitting the stud off the wiper motor i emailed bash we're going to see what he says um damn Looks killer. We'll just, uh, I'll get back to you guys when he gets me an answer. I do have an option if I take this wiper motor out, and maybe I'm supposed to. Maybe I misread the instructions. I know it said to remove the arm, but I don't remember it saying anything about the motor. If I take this out, it'll sit flush, which is no longer usable anyways, so I don't see a problem with that. So I'm going to pick this video up on another day, probably when I get a little more time and a little more sunlight. Bash said on the newer versions, this rubber piece here can interfere with it. But since you don't need the wiper arm, you could remove this part of the uh, rubber grommet and it'll fit flush. I'm thinking I'm going to take the motor out tomorrow. We're gonna measure it and see if I can find a rubber plug that fits this. Since I don't need it, there's no point in having it. And then he cautioned me up here with the gaps being so tight, I may have to grind a little bit of the sheet metal down on the hitch, which I've marked over here. Because, hold on guys, I'm trying to do this one handed. There is a slight overhang on the hatch, and that line isn't how much it overhangs. That line is just marking where the bracket lies on the inner bracket lies on the outer bracket. So I'm going to take a grinding wheel and just take my time and finesse this. These guys at HK Off-Road, they take the time to custom make these per each vehicle. And with custom parts, sometimes you have to have custom solutions. It's not that big ordeal. It's the joy of having a custom rig. So tomorrow we'll pick up uh, what we're doing with this. I've got some rubber plugs in the garage, so I'm going to see what I can do. Now, this is loose anyway, so it's no good to me without an arm. So, Like I said, you guys, it's like 
11 o'clock here in Colorado, 10 o'clock on the West Coast, and Bash, well, I won't say he will do it if he's awake. I mean, he's a stand-up guy. He's been there the whole time. I've had questions getting answers for you guys. So we'll continue this in the morning. All right, so last night we left off at this thing not fitting right because of the wiper stud. This is right here. Now, I could have got away with just taking the cover off. But I decided I like to look better without it back there. So I'm just going to take a rubber grommet and probably glue it or fix it in there somehow. Probably some RTV just around it. It'll tighten it up and fit good. So the next step will be mocking these. Or marking these, I mean. And then drilling those half inch holes. You can see fitment is pretty clean. Um, we do have some clearance issues here. Right in here. So once I get my other holes drilled and situated, we'll figure out what we got to do. Pull this off and grind it a little bit. These are custom made, you guys. Um, things happen with custom parts. I'm not worried about it. Bash and I talked about it today. Uh, he told me just want to be really cautious with this because if you open the hatch and it starts binding up on your roof, it could uh, fold your roof in. So you guys can see the fit and finish is great on here, right around the third brake light. I'm probably going to lose, well, I'm not going to lose it. You aren't going to really be able to see this. So I'm going to work on somehow, some way. There's a little hole under here for the washer nozzle comes out. I'm going to probably use that hole and sandwich or somehow run some wires and put a third brake light depending on where my tire situates. I might just put it down here if I have room. I might just try to find like a one inch strip or, some, or one inch LED to put in there as a third brake light. We'll see how it looks with the tire on it. Um, the added bonus is even if I cover that hole there, I have this rubber grommet here. That I'm going to be or a rubber plug that I'll you'd always poke a wire through if I need to, or I can even come out of this one here, as you can see. So let's get some light on this. You can see I center marked the hole. Oops, see better about it. Center marked this hole, center marked this one, and even the one over here. So, what I'll do is I will tap or center punch these drill a small hole through it and then take my half inch a bit and just hog it out and then there's two pieces of metal that go under here to gap it slightly so we're getting there guys a little bit of time I think it looks cool Let me step back see how tight it fits to the window now this is a half inch oh, I stood on this last night and it didn't flex any, so we should be okay. So we have the four initial holes drilled for the spare tire mount. Now I'm gonna take the mount and put it back on, make sure all the holes line up. Then we'll get all the metal bracketry. This guy right here. Set in place and make sure we get everything squared up and make sure it all works together. Let me get that thing up there and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So you can see how this is kind of cut at an angle, beveled in. So it's going to sit under here right around where your wiper motor's at. You can see I have this one mocked up already. Now the bolts are just holding it in place. I didn't put a nut on the inside. So I'll get this sitting and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So what I did was put the first bolt in on this side. Then you got this one here to line up. That way you can almost do it one handed. See how clean this looks. Now if you want you can cinch these up with a nut. Or you just can bend it down 
and get that marked up. You see it's got a little bit of wiggle room. You can wiggle it and get it all situated. Once you have it, you push it and center mark these, center punch them, and then repeat that stuff on this side. So tonight, we'll have this all mocked up. Then tomorrow I'll have to paint this. And then we still gotta grind the top down. I gotta find a grinding wheel before we actually paint it. So that's how this is gonna look. Okay, so to allow this to pivot out of the way, I just took one of the bolts out here. That way I could drop it down and pivot it. Now I've got a mark here and a mark here. I'm gonna center punch these, pilot drill, and then go step up to a half inch bolt hole. So center punch. and a tiny ball peen. So we have all 12 half inch holes drilled. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, what supports it on the inside? And yes, you guys, this is just mocked up, so don't mind it being loose. But on the inside, Bash includes these big old plates and they will sit inside. Not exactly sure the orientation. Like this. Sorry, I'm showing you guys the bumper. It'll sit inside like this to sandwich against the sheet metal. You guys get two plates for those and then you have a top plate that goes underneath the hatch like this. And I know, sorry guys, I'm trying to multitask here. I think it's gonna look badass. We'll paint this flat, flat black rust oleum like the bumper. And then we'll do a matte clear on it. So we'll take it all back apart tonight. Because I can't drive to work with it loose. And when you guys do something like this, keep your hardware in a secure place. You're supposed to have a total of 12 nuts and 8 bolts. So, I just keep mine in my toolbox drawer. Because that's about the only organized part of my garage. Like I said, eventually, now that I know where this sits, I might figure out some way to make a bracket off of here. I gotta see where the tire sits and make a third brake light somehow. So, for tonight, that's it. We'll continue this video tomorrow. Uh, I still have to grind along here. As you can see how tight it is. So, we'll just take a little grinding wheel. I got one somewhere around here. And then we'll paint it all. And then start working on modifying for the struts. So... I'll show you what I'm talking about with the struts before I call it a night. So we're going to replace this stud down here. As it gets replaced with a heavier duty stud, ball stud. And then up here, we're supposed to unbolt this, take this plate out, and I think I'm supposed to grind this down and then drill through it and put a quarter inch hole in it to pass some new hardware through for the new struts. Um, I'll show you guys some new struts. So here's the stud, ball stud mount side and here's the new upper. So he wants us to take this apart, and drill it out, and then put a longer bolt in it. Now, from what I'm gathering though, this bolt in this kit might be a little long.
so we'll have to get it all mocked up. If I have to get some new bolts, that's not a big deal. That's an easy fix. Alright guys, so, as I was saying last night, before I stopped for the night, we also have clearance issues here on the hatch. You get, um, so to determine how the hatch fits on this, I took the backing plate that goes inside the hatch, set it on here, and then I just squished it down and I drew a line with a sharpie. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and grind this down a little bit. I don't think I'll take it all the way to the line. I might take it all the way to the line. We'll see. What I want to do is grind this down. And then as bashed it on this side. So I can flip this heavy ass thing over. Oh, guys. You guys can see how he kind of beveled the edges there. So, I think we're going to grind it down, I'm going to rebuild the edge, and then we'll mock it up. And see if we clear the hatch, because right now we're, the hatch is hitting the roof. So let me get a grinder out. And we'll go from there. Now, unless y'all have done this in slippers or sandals, I don't really recommend it. I've just done it so long, especially after eight years in Hawaii, that it just doesn't bug me anymore. Usually if you're doing metal work, you guys want to wear closed-toed shoes. So, don't follow my poor example of what, what I'm doing um, on that aspect. I'm always barefoot or in slippers. So, like I said, we're going to grind this and try to square it up as best as possible. I just have a four and a half inch Dewalt with a grinding wheel. I don't want to go from there. What we're trying to do is even this out here. Uh, the line is my max line. And what I want to do is take it, but I want to keep that rounded shape. If you guys look, it's got a little roundness to it. That matches the curvature on the hatch. Uh, so I'm taking this down slightly. And as we grind it down, eventually we're going to take it down a little bit. And then we're going to test fit it. Um, and you want to make sure you bevel the backside like it already is. See how it's kind of beveled. So let's take a little bit more off. For demonstration purposes, I'll do it one-handed, but really don't recommend this. Take that down a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is flip this over, and we're going to work on rebeveling the other edge a little bit, so that way it continues with how Bash originally did it. So you guys can see the bevel he put into this, and that's in part to also help clearance along the uh, roof and hatch meet where they meet and lift up. So I'm going to take it just a hair. And try to get rid of this fat little lip that I caused by grinding it down. That's for how that's sitting now. What I'm going to do is take this out to Project Gus Gus and see if we have adequate clearance. Well, 
test fit number one uh, didn't clearance it enough. I'm going to take some more meat off this and I might have to take it all the way down to the line that I uh, drew on there. Sorry, I was looking at, looking at it. Um, you guys can see. I'll have to turn the camera around. But looking at it, I'm going to have to probably take it down significantly. Uh, at least maybe a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of, I mean, it's not huge, but it's enough to where it's smacking the, the uh, roof line. And uh, Bash warned me that if it's hitting the roof, it will buckle the roof, especially once we start getting weight on it. So take your time, get this to fit right before you paint it, before you put weight on it, because the last thing you want to do is get this hatch mounted up or this tire carry mounted up on your hatch and not have it fit right, especially once you get the tire on it and everything. So let me grind a little more and we'll test fit again. We'll go from there. So if you guys do a lot of products by yourself like I do, you get creative and figure out how to do things on your own. Um, this being one of them. You can see we have clearance here, but not here. So what I want to do is I'm going to mark it right where it starts making contact, about here. And don't worry, this paint, this marker will get covered up. And you guys want to mark it like right around here. So, yeah, I got some on the truck. Basically, by grinding this down in here, and let's see the gap here, guys, sorry. Take, you can see this is very clear clear up until about right there we clear this up and we look like we have adequate adequate clearance here it's deceiving on the camera but I can angle this bevel this a little bit more here you guys so you guys can see I got a gap there so we have a little bit more clip to clear here and then, I said you're doing this by yourself. It doesn't hurt to be creative. I couldn't hold the hatch and crawl up here at the same time. So let me get off this ladder and show you guys what I ended up doing. I wedged a rubber mallet in the hatch just enough to see where it's hitting. So now that we know, we'll take this back down, grind it a little more. It doesn't need a whole lot. Bevel the edges a little tighter and then retry this is try two by the way so don't grind a whole lot all at once take your time and get it right don't rush because then if you get ugly gaps it's just gonna look like shit well six time we have adequate clearance on here the show i'm having now is these bolt heads so i'm gonna try to grind these just a hair you guys can see where the kind of scuffed the paint on Gus Gus. So we're gonna grind these. See that? So I'll grind these down a little. Try to get this down just a smidge. I mean, he welded them on the other side, so I'm not worried about the strength there. But I also don't want to take all the metal out to where they break th break somehow. Maybe Bash will give me feedback on this once he sees the video. So Bash told me that X-rays have really tight tolerances and he wasn't kidding. I've taken the bolt heads down as far as I could without thinking I was going to compromise something. Uh, the only way to make sure these clear perfectly would be to take these heads off altogether. Uh, we're still getting some scuffage here. But any more than that and I'm going to have to weld the bolt studs from the top and then grind them smooth again. And I don't know how to weld. So I'd have to pay someone to do that. So we're still touching here slightly, here slightly, and down there we're clear. But right here you guys can tell we're almost at the max of what this can take. And we're still scuffing slightly. So I guess I could try to hit it one more time just for shits and giggles and see what happens, but I really don't want to be taking a lot more meat off of this. This is about as far as I dare to go.
So, might be in the stages to prime of this and prep it for install and just get it in. We've been having some pretty good rains and me driving around with open holes in my hatches has not been a good thing for it. So, I'll let you guys know what I decide here in a few minutes because I got to sit down and debate. If I want to grind more, just paint it and let it ride. Hey you guys, I'm going to interrupt the install video with a thought real quick. While the bolt heads and the Kratos tire carrier fit really tight between the hatch and the body went up, I wonder if the fact that my stepdad replaced the hatch is part of the problem with my clearance issues. Um, I can't say this is solely a tire carrier problem because the Jeep did have the hatch replaced. It wasn't hit hard, but it was hit hard enough to put a dent in the old hatch. And my stepdad didn't like the way it looked, so he put a different hatch on it. They're both off 2001 Cherokee, or it was off another 01 Cherokee, though. So, my solution is, I'm going to take the tire carrier to Winding Road Fab, Rication, uh, run by Gabriel Miller. We're going to grind the bolt heads down while he is, and he's going to weld it and then grind it flush uh, in hopes to give me more room and clearance. Uh, here in the Colorado Springs area, Gabriel Miller is a really stand up known well known and stand up guy for off road fab and um his company winding road fabrication does some killer work so that being said i'm dropping a tire tire carrier off with him he's gonna make some adjustments for me uh this is not to say anything bad about bash and his product uh every custom build requires custom solutions and hiccups that you run into so we'll adjust as we as we work with it and we'll go from there so i'll show you guys the end result um, with what uh, Gabriel Miller decided to do with it and uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. Here's what I had Gabe at Winding Road Fabrication do. He cut the heads off, welded them smooth, and then ground them so it's flush. We also checked for fitment. Everything fit good. So now we're going to move to installing or modifying the upper brackets to put bolts through to hold the struts to. Um, Gabe said they look strong enough to hold you know, our struts. He said they're pretty well uh, made factory. He said uh, if I don't feel comfortable, he gave me some thicker angle to try. I think we'll try Bash's way and just cut the studs off. Um, you guys can see I already jumped ahead and did one here. Holds a 20 uh, quarter by 20 bolt. And I'll go get the other one and we can do a side by side comparison. So, this is a factory upper strut mount on my XJ. You can see how that works. And then, what you do here, let's get back to this. What you do is you cut this head off, uh, clamp it down, cut it. And you want to cut it as tight to the bracket as you can without grinding into the bracket and then you're going to center punch this portion out and then you're going to re-drill this hole with a quarter inch bit uh, i got some almost four inch long bolts and i don't know what how they plan on me using them uh, these are one and a half inch bolts that i picked up from lowe's the grade eights um, so these go in here now the only thing I noticed is, with the new struts, there's a lot of slop. And I'm going to message Bash before I video, finish this video. And maybe all I need to do is put a washer on the side and tighten it, but there is quite a bit of play in it. Um, let me go pick up one of the struts, and I'll show you guys what I'm dealing with. So he said use a quarter by 20 bolt, and I use an even a shoulder bolt. And you can see how loose it is. And I understand there's supposed to be pivot play. But I should almost be able to put a 516's bolt in this for it to fit tight. Uh, maybe even bigger. Maybe even a 3 8's. Uh, I'd have to go to Lowe's and try it. But the problem with that is... Let's see if I get this bolt back out of here one handed you guys for your sake. I cannot... Adequately take this bracket out. Much more... I mean... 
You guys can see. I can't really take the bracket out much more. There. It's got to be almost a 5 sixteenths. I might be able to take it out just a hair more. But other than that, I wouldn't be comfortable doing it. And that's when I step up to cutting some angle and making my own brackets. Uh, before we conclude this video and in the install of the strut, painting the, um, painting the tire here and getting all that bolted up, I'm going to message Bash and see what he says about the whole size difference. So, we'll go from there. Um, yeah. Let me get back to you guys after I message Bash. I know it's late and uh, he'll probably get back to me in the morning. This has been a couple day video for me guys. Uh, I work six days a week, nine to ten hour days. So when I get home, I only get about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe an hour tops in the garage. Uh, and this is coming piece by piece. So this video is going to be choppy over a two week span. After talking with some people, um, I said I'm just going to make my own brackets. I'm not happy with how the bolts fit in the strut, so we're going to go step up to some 5 16 shoulder bolts. I'm going to take some thicker angle and make these brackets to support the strut. Let me show you guys what's going on here. So I put the angle in the vise. You guys can see how much beefier that is. Then I went and took my bracket, marked where I need the two holes, and I'm going to hit this with a step bit and just go through it and see what happens. So, two holes. And then a hole for the strut. These are about slightly a little larger than they need to be, just to allow some play. So I gotta adjust it back and forth. I may or may not go home and cut these corners and round this off yet. I haven't decided yet if I wanna go for aesthetics. But this part, done. And then we'll paint it black. Now just to make one more. And there's still plenty of meat on that. All right, you guys, so here is the bracket I made. Uh, we get... Kind of rounded the edges a little bit so I don't hit my hands on anything sharp. It's got the two bolt holes that are mounted to the hatch and then clearance for the strut. Um, I'll put a bolt on it, show you guys what I'm working with. And then you guys can see why I notched it. So here you guys go. Clearance. I might take a little more off. And yeah, I know there's a little more shoulder uh, sticking out. But I'm going to put a couple washers in there to space it up a little bit. Unless I can go, go find me a shorter bolt. I think it's something like, like that. Just stack a couple washers, it'll work. And then whatever's excess on the thread, after tightening it all up, um, cut it down. Might even go find a shorter bolt yet. I wasn't sure how big a bolt lengthwise I was going to need. This just fit the strut perfectly so little DIY not the prettiest thing but it works so now I'm going to cut the other one uh, I'll show you guys side by side what they look like but I've got to cut the other one still and grind it a little bit so here's a second side by side comparison the one on the right is how it started the one on the left is where it's at now uh, it'll be plenty strong enough definitely probably overkill now but shouldn't fail so, let me get marking this one. Now I'm just going to trace out the template and we're going to go from there. So. Okay, so here we have the brackets or the 
plates that go underneath the tire here on the outside. These two longer ones here that are beveled. The beveled point goes by where the wiper motor would sit. This is the top plate inside, under the hatch. And the reinforcement plates here and here, they go inside the hatch. And then my shock or my strut brackets. Uh, priming them first, just using some Rust-Oleum primer, fast drying primer. So we're going to let this sit for a little while. We'll apply a second coat, then probably let it sit yet again. Then we'll flip them and prime the back side. Once these are primed and dry, then I'll make space to prime and paint the actual carrier. Um, we're going to do these in flat black with a matte clear, kind of like how I did the bumpers. We're finally into the paint stage. So... First coat of flat black down. <clears throat> it's got to sit and dry for a little while. Then we'll apply our second coat and then we'll flip the parts over. And do those sides. Once again, I'm using Rust Oleum uh, High Performance Enamel. So, it says 15 minute. Pass dry. So we'll see what happens with it. I'm giving it about 20 to 20 minutes between coats, light coats. So it may look glossy now, but like I said, it's just wet. So should have this thing all painted up tonight and then hopefully bolted on tomorrow and installed. I still have to, <coughs> excuse me, guys. I still have to install the lower stud mounts ball studs for the struts and get everything mocked up uh, I haven't decided I gotta go get shorter bolts yet for the um, struts upper strut bolts so we're getting there So here we have the factory ball stud that holds the factory strut. Here's the aftermarket one, and you guys can see just the size difference in them. So use that. And then up here we use the factory style bracket. In this video you guys would see the fiasco I had with my brackets. So. I'll show you guys the finish install on this side. I had to go step to a slightly smaller bolt than what HK Off Road supplied for the simple fact that it just had too much shoulder sticking out and I would have had to stack too many washers. So, um, and here's that factory bracket. And then you guys can see how it mounts to the ball sit down here. Nice, clean. So we'll finally get the struts in. Um, I ran into some snags with the um, tire carrier itself when I was painting it. Also found some issues with it still not fitting right and why it wasn't. Um, and I'll show you guys that in a different section of this video. So I just wanted to show you guys how we got to the hatch uh, brackets. Finally, finally resolved. Alright you guys, I didn't um, shares with you when I showed you guys the finished install. What I noticed is if I tighten this bolt up before I get it all mounted on, it has a tendency to bind on the top of the strut. I really wish there was a way to go to a ball stud upper up here or even a um, high like factory. But that being said, I left this loose until it was all ready and bolted in and tight up here. 
and now I'll put it, the nut on here and we'll just snug it up. Um, if you guys can see on this side, there's a little bit of gap in here, but it's just enough to give it clearance. So that's what we're going to mimic on the other side. So this is the bracket we originally started with. Um, I showed you guys how I modified that and I'll include, that's all included in this video. It had a ball, single ball stud, and that was bolted up like this. Well, this is the factory bracket, and I didn't know Jeep had two different brackets. Um, this is from an aftermarket strut, hat strut. So no, you're looking for this kind of setup. Now, not knowing what I was looking for, I designed my own. Um, I based that off the wrong piece of metal. I based that off the original single-sided bracket I designed that I threw in the trash. And if you can tell, that is way too big. Bolt hole size is fine, but width-wise, the whole nine. It's just too wide, too tall, and it interferes with the seals, and I don't want to tear those up. So, save yourself the um, headache. If you have these single-sided brackets, stock, Order a set of struts that comes with this bracket here, and then uh, they're like 20 bucks on Amazon, 20 for 25 bucks, and it saves you a world of headache. So now we have the struts installed. I can actually open and close this, and then we'll get the tire on the carrier on there after it gets back from powder coat because the paint got screwed up, um, and go from there. Well, y'all, uh, this video was basically just the mock-up and install, overall install of the HK off-road tire care, uh, the Kratos tire care. Overall, fit and finish needs some work, as with any custom install, but this required a lot more than I was originally planning. Uh, I'm glad I didn't order it pre-powder coated or any other thing with it. Um, would I buy it again? I'm not sure. It looks cool, but it was kind of a pain in the ass just with all the problems I had. Um, I think it would have to be determined by finding anything else. I'm not a huge fan of the bumper carry tire carriers, um, so this one kind of fit my bill. Only time will tell how it works on the back of the hatch. While it's off the powder coat, it should be back in about a week, and we'll do a final install video so you guys can see that. Thanks for watching. God bless.